Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Pen Habit. My name's Matt Armstrong, and I'm back today to do another video. This time we're doing another one of the Indian-made pens that I ordered in a recent order from Fountain Pen Revolution. This time we are looking at the Serwex, or Serwex, I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced, 1362. So this is a pretty inexpensive pen. It's only $7, uh, I believe. I'd have to go check the website again. Um, but it's, it's certainly less than 10. Uh, it is a piston filler for less than 10. Now, um, I have had some mixed experiences with some of the Indian pens that I've gotten before, um, especially when you compare them to some of the Chinese pens. So let's dive into the Serwix 1362, and let me tell you a little bit about it. <clears throat> so uh, this is a small pen. Uh, it's It's a pretty small pen, but again, it's $7 piston filler. Uh, it It's made out of a fairly, it feels kind of rubbery, a fairly soft plastic. Um, it, you know, obviously injection molded at this price, it almost has to be. Um, uh, nice clip here. It's very tight, um, much more solid than uh, than some of the other clips that I have have received. Uh, nice and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice miniature cigar shaped pen. It comes in a range of different colors. I got the blue one, obviously the end here is the piston control. Um, it's, there's nothing terribly special about it, but there's also nothing terribly wrong with it. It's just, it's a pen, um, has a little hole here, which I will get to in a little bit. And, uh, you know, the, the finish isn't super refined i would say there's you i don't know if you can see it here on the video but there's a little there's a little gouge in the plastic here and it looks kind of scratched already as though this was just thrown into a giant bin with a bunch of other pens and and uh but again seven dollar pen you're going to you're going to hear me say that a lot on this uh on this review uh go ahead and unscrew the pen and you've got a number 5 size nib uh, this says FPR on it, and I believe this is the medium nib that I got. Uh, fairly standard little feed here, um, and I just got ink all over myself. Let me grab my ink cloth. Um, you can't see it because I've got the pen inked right now, but there is actually an ink win. Their little ink window. Uh, well, this whole this whole area, this whole sec part of the section here is clear, so you can see. I don't know if you can see it very well here. Probably not. But you can see if there's ink in the pen. You don't need to worry about uh, about making sure that there's ink in the pen because you'll be able to tell pretty easily. This whole section where the threads are up until where the blue starts is all transparent. So you can see that. Um, as I mentioned, it is a very small pen. You know, it's I, I have to hold it about up here, which is fine. But in so doing, it's 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 not great. So this is, uh, like this, it's only 115 millimeters long. This is a pen that almost requires posting. Uh, it's 133 millimeters capped and posted. It is only 147 millimeters. Now this is a pen I, I would not use unposted. I just wouldn't. This, I have to post this pen. Um, fortunately this pen is very, very light. It's it's quite small, but it's also very light. It is only eight grams uncapped with ink in it, and twelve grams with ink in it capped or posted. It's it's a light pen. So if you like light pens, you like skinny pens or a little bit more slender pens, this is probably a good one. The grip is nine millimeters. The barrel is eleven point seven millimeters, and the cap is thirteen millimeters. It's funny because the cap on this. This pen is the same width as the grip on a Mont Blanc 149. So <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a much more slender pen. Now, because this nib is so small, and because of the way that the section is, is built, I have to hold the pen above the threads. I, I hold it right up here when I write, or even 
up on the barrel. I don't hold it down here. I, I couldn't. I'd have to do it at such a funky angle. It just wouldn't make sense for me. But if you've got smaller hands, this is actually, this is a pen that might work out for you pretty well. Stainless steel nib, they've got a whole series of nibs. It's basically the same nibs that you can get on any of the Fountain Pen Revolution uh, branded pens. And uh, yeah, it it's, feels much more solidly built than some of the other Indian pens I've, I've gotten, but I would not consider this to, to still be, I mean, for seven bucks, expect the same quality you would get if you bought a, a ballpoint pen or a rollerball pen from your local office supply store for five, six dollars. It's, it's going to be that level of pen, not, I would not consider this a fine writing instrument. This is a very utilitarian writing instrument. This is one I wouldn't mind lending to someone at work or taking with me to the grocery store or throwing in a bag. Now, before I get to the writing sample, one quick thing I do want to talk about is I filled this pen up with ink and uh, capped it and put it in. I have a Aston leather 10 pen carrying case that I use to carry my pens to work. So I put it in the case, took it to work, didn't use it for a couple days. When I got the pen out, almost all of the ink was out of the pen and inside the cap. And because the cap has this little itty bitty hole in it, some of it had actually gotten out into the pen wallet. Um, I don't know why that happened. I hadn't jostled the pen case around extremely in any in any reason that I had realized or any way I had realized. And it hasn't happened since. I refilled the pen with the same ink. Hasn't happened since. So I'm not sure if that was just a a, a real brief thing or what was going on there, but just uh, just be aware that that is an experience I had early on with this pen. Doesn't seem to have happened again. So it may have just been an anomaly. Okay, so the nibs on these pens can be really hit or miss, as has been my experience. This one was actually pretty good. Now, normally I don't adjust my nibs before I do the reviews because I want to show you how they how they were when I got them. I did smooth this nib out. I was kind of expecting and was not terribly surprised by the fact that the nib was a bit rougher than I was expecting. Um, and, and that seems to be a pretty standard thing with the pens, these Indian made pens that I've gotten. So just be aware of the Indian made pens I've gotten. I've gotten two, I've gotten three nibs that are standard non-flex nibs that all three of them have needed some work, varying levels. Both of the flex nibs I've gotten on various pens have actually been pretty good. So if you want to play around with a flex nib, this might be one where you give it a try. I'm not sure if the flex is an option for this pen, but if it is, those nibs seem to be a little bit more refined than some of the non-flex nibs that I have seen. And if it's not, it's the same size nib, so you could just order an extra one for a couple bucks and swap it out yourself. Or being in a number five size nib, you could get a number five size nib from a, a nicer manufacturer like, I know Edison carries Yovo number five nibs, and there are a couple of other places, Meister nibs, which I also believe is run by Brian Gray. Uh, there, there are places to buy number five nibs around that you might get a slightly better quality nib if you go that route. So let's do a writing sample and let me show you how this works. All right. So the pen for today is a Serwex. 1362. We have a steel nib. And it is a number five size nib. And I believe this one is a medium. They don't mark their nibs, so I don't know for sure. The ink for today is Diamine. Hooray for the correct pronunciation. Oxblood. Now, if you are into fountain pens, I hardly need to tell you this is one of the, the most popular inks on the market, and with good reason. It is a beautiful, beautiful ink. Be behaves wonderfully for a red with some brown in it, nice and dark, really does look like blood. It's a beautiful color, and almost everyone who I've shown it to has loved it. So if you're looking for a nice dark red ink, you really can't go better than Diamine Oxblood. And I don't know if I mentioned this in an earlier video, the correct pronunciation is in fact diamine, not diamine or diamine or diamine or whatever it is I said in previous videos, it is diamine. I know because I emailed the company and asked. So let me post the pen 
and we will get to our writing sample. All right. So let's talk wetness here. A little bit of thing. This pen is not terribly wet. It's not terribly dry. This is a nice right down the middle moderate as far as I'm concerned. It's, it really is. It, it has been pretty solid for me. Um, the, the pen has flowed fairly smoothly. I haven't had any problems aside from that first one I had with the ink getting all over the inside of the cap, and I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but, uh, but aside from that, ink flow has been moderate, right, right down the middle moderate, which is not a bad thing, especially if you are working on cheap paper, get the fine nib on this. Their nibs do run a little on the fine side. And, uh, and I think the ink flow, if it's like the ink flow on this, will probably serve you very well. You won't have a lot of bleed through and things like that because it's not super wet. Uh, in terms of line variation, there is some line variation you can get. Um, it's not a ton of line variation. This nib is not terribly flexible, but you know, it, 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 you can coax a little out if you need to. If you really want more line variation though, as I mentioned earlier, just grab one of the FPR flex nibs and, and jam it in here. And I think you'll be fine because uh, those will give you more flex and more line variation than one of these. Um, yeah, it it's with a little bit of micro mesh and a little bit of time, this nib has actually become pretty nice. It's not, I wouldn't consider it one of my favorites, but I've used this pen for about a week and a half now, and I have never had the pen fail to keep up with me. Now that I fixed the nib, it's never been scratchy. I don't have problems with hard starts or skipping. So um, of the Indian made pens that I've tried so far, this is probably the, the most solid of them. The piston mechanism on this is pretty smooth. The ink window is nice. All in all, I've been pretty thrilled for getting a piston filler uh, for less than $10. That's, I mean, even noodlers, which is only piston fillers, cost more than that. This is not, you know, I've said it before, this is not going to be a top of the line pen and you shouldn't expect it to be for what you're paying. And when you compare it to something like one of the pens in my earlier videos, so I'll pull this out. This is the, the Bauer 51, which was $8 shipped from China. And this was this is the Sirwix 1362, which is shipped from India. It was $7, I believe, to buy, 6 or $7. Plus there was shipping for the whole thing. And I think shipping was $3 or something like that from India. Um, the the build quality on this is higher. There's no question about it. Now, part of that is because this is a metal pen. Um, but overall, in general trends, I find that the Chinese pens tend to have slightly better build quality than the Indian pens that I have tried thus far, at least on the very low end of the price range. That being said, this isn't a piston filler. This is. Um, this has worked very, very well. It's kind of understated. There's nothing terribly special about it. But if you're looking for just an average, everyday, work-a-day pen that'll do a good job for you and you shouldn't have too many problems with, give this one a try. Now, I, I do want to say one more time, because I don't want anyone to think that I expect all the pens to work as, as well as this one did. The nibs especially often need adjustment. So if you don't know how to do adjustment, first of all, if you're into fountain pens, do yourself a favor and learn how to do adjustment. This is a really good pen to practice on because it's pretty inexpensive. And if you ruin the nib, you can always get a new one for like $2. So 
learn how to smooth your own nibs and adjust your own nibs. Buy yourself some micro mesh. I like the stuff that Anderson Pens sells. The it's like ten sheets of uh, padded micro mesh that goes from sixteen hundred grit to twelve thousand grit. Buy some of that and a loop, a little bit of mylar paper and a brass shim, because if you're going to use fountain pens, you're going to use those tools all the time. Every time I visit home to my family, they ask me to bring my tools so I can tune up all of their pens while I'm there. So uh, the Serwex 1382 Serwex, I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. Nice pen, nothing special, but for the, for the money, it's a good value. I would consider this a good value. It's small too, so if you're a small hands person, give this one a go. All right, well, that should do it for this video. Thank you again for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, all the stuff I say every video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, a quick plug um, or a quick uh, notification. The videos may slow down just a little bit over the next month or so. I'm in the middle of recording two audiobooks, one a Korean War memoir uh, and the other a, a contemporary fantasy novel. Uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of those right now. So I'm putting out these videos as quickly as I can, but these have to take a backseat to the paying gigs. So <laughs> thank you very much for watching. And uh, when, the, when the audio book comes out, I'll make sure to, to mention it on the, the video so you can go give them a listen. Thank you for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.